This story happened when I was in high school. It made me experience a creepy incident. An ordinary summer night in the suburbs became the most bizarre page in my life. The suburban town where I lived for many years had very few entertainment resources, which made me have very little entertainment life and made me feel very lonely. This town only had one small bar, a small shopping mall and an old restaurant. Old movie theaters with meager entertainment options for young people. However, I was a loner. Because I was confused about my sexual orientation, I never dared to confess to my parents that I was gay. This secret isolated me from social interaction. The marital problems between my parents also intensified, and the sound of their quarrels hurt my ears like sharp knives. Their constant quarrels made me feel cold about marriage, as if life had become less beautiful after marriage. However, as a minor, I couldn't find relief, couldn't go to a bar for a drink, and shopping malls were closed after 8 p.m., so my only refuge was the movie theater. Almost every night, they have late-night screenings that last from 12 midnight to 2 a.m. My distant cousin Jack worked there as a janitor and helped me sneak into the cinema without buying a ticket. These late-night shows are known as, Dead Hours, because so few people come to watch them that it's as if the entire town has gone to sleep. That warm summer night, when I couldn't stand the sound of my parents arguing, I called Jack to ask if there was a movie playing. He replied, it will start in 10 minutes. Come here quickly. I immediately ran away from the house and walked on the deserted streets. There were only the chirping of crickets and dim street lights, which made me feel peaceful. As weird as it sounds, isolation seemed to be the only comfort during that troubling time, although I understand that loneliness has its costs. As I walked toward the flashing sign of the movie theater at the end of the street, the name of the movie gradually became visible. It turned out to be a horror movie that I had heard the boys at school talking about, so I was really excited. I quickly entered the cinema and saw Jack standing near the red ticket office. There was a thick layer of glass behind him, which seemed to isolate me from the outside world. He smiled and pointed into the cinema. The commercials had started playing and the theater was filled with darkness, but I didn't care and took a corner seat in the second row. There's a couple in the front row, deep in their own world, and two loners scattered across the vast cinema. The movie started and I took out a pack of cigarettes. This cinema is never busy on weekdays, especially during these odd hours when you can smoke or drink as much as you want and no one will care. I once witnessed a guy smoking meth in the front row. I was focused on the movie on the screen, but he seemed to be going through his own visionary journey. I was deep in thought, and suddenly I realized that I had to put out the slowly burning cigarette. Not wanting to start a fire, I looked away from the screen and bent down to put out my cigarette with my sneakers. Suddenly, I heard heavy breathing. I looked up to find the source of the sound, and at that moment, my heart seemed to freeze. There was a man sitting there, to the left of the center row of the cinema, staring at me. Since he was sitting in a central position, he had a clear view of my face. His gaze was eerie, as if he could see into my mind. But it wasn't just his stare that disturbed me. His breathing was also unusually heavy. There was no trace of blood on his haggard face, and his right eye had a creepy and abnormal twitching. He smiled at me for no reason and I realized he was probably just another drug addict. Despite my discomfort, I chose to ignore him and return to focusing on the movie, expecting him to drift off to sleep in his seat. However, Curiosity made me look back at him again, and this time, I saw a scene that made my hair stand on end. He opened his mouth wide, 
saliva dripping down his chin. The nausea made me almost throw up, but I had to stay calm. I know that this terrible movie theater has become a place for me to escape from the world, especially at this late night. His saliva dripped down his chin and he continued to stare at me. I felt very uncomfortable, but I told myself that I had spent countless nights in this terrible place and I had to stay calm. After all, I wasn't the only one in this movie theater, my cousin Jack was right outside and I had to keep my sanity. To distract myself, I pulled out a can of beer I had stolen from my father and started sipping on it. For the next five minutes, I lived through the most horrific experience of my life, a memory I can't forget and that still haunts me in my dreams at night. That terrible movie theater, at this point in time, seemed like a trap for loners and those seeking refuge. The movie drew me in, but suddenly I realized I had to put out the slow-burning cigarette. Not wanting to start a fire, I looked away from the screen and leaned over to put it out with my sneakers. At this time, I heard the heavy breathing again. I looked up, and this time, what I saw was even more horrifying. The man stood up, shaking like a corpse, and began to shift seats to be closer to me. His breathing became more rapid, as if he could no longer bear the distance. I was terrified, completely petrified. He climbed onto the seat like a zombie, arms outstretched, breathing like a wheeze. He was only three rows of seats away from me. Suddenly I heard the vibrating sound of my cell phone, and I jumped up and screamed, Get away from me, stay away from me. I jumped out of my seat and ran towards the exit. As I hurried across the front row, I stumbled over a couple making out, causing chaos. My boyfriend stood up angrily and grabbed my collar, ready to teach me a lesson. I tried to explain the situation but he clearly didn't want to listen. He pumped his fist and tried to hit me, but his girlfriend let out a scream of agony. The lights came on, and we all saw an incredible scene, the man sat on the floor, biting the girl's left leg with his rotten teeth. Jack rushed in, and the other two homeless men slowly came to their senses. Medics and police were called. It turns out that this man is neither a madman nor a drug addict. He was in the final stages of rabies, a disease that was horrific because he lived on the filthy streets. Medical staff found a bite mark on his right arm that appeared to have been from a rabid street dog. He came in excruciating pain, his throat became extremely dry and his life was slowly draining away from him. He longed to be near the beer in my hand because his hacking cough had become unbearable. The girl was immediately vaccinated and we can only pray that she doesn't suffer like the poor homeless man. As for him, it was too late for him. He died hours later. This happened many years ago. I was bored and wasting time in a bar. The girl sitting at the table next to me attracted me. Before I finished my glass of wine, I walked up to the girl's table and said hello to her. The girl happily invited me. We sat down to drink together, we had a good chat and introduced ourselves to each other, so I asked the girl how about we go to a movie. The girl quickly agreed to my request, so we walked out of the bar and got into my car, with the girl sitting in my passenger seat. After about ten minutes we turned onto a dusty road through dense woods. I turned left and she pointed to a building behind the bushes. I saw it was an old abandoned movie theater with a worn-out movie poster that still looked like, what happened to Babe Jean. Wow, this place is older than my late grandma. I come here often when I want to be alone. This used to be a famous movie theater but there was a terrible fire and everyone died inside while watching a movie. Despite the horrific story she told me, I didn't find it exciting to watch a movie in a burned-out movie theater. 
The girl thought I didn't know what happened here. She told me that so many deaths had happened here, and it made me feel even more uneasy because she told me. But I couldn't leave her alone and go home on her own. Quick, let's go in. She said and walked in, and I followed reluctantly. I turned on the flashlight on my phone, but she walked in the dark as confidently as if she were walking in her own home. As I walked through the hallways of the movie theater, I felt a chill. Broken glass and dirty rags were scattered everywhere, and a thick layer of dust had accumulated on the old ticket office, permanently changing its color. Posters from some of the oldest movies still hang on the walls, some of them still recognizable. She stopped in front of a door and looked back at me with a strange smile on her face. This is my favorite room, come on, she said. Favorite room? How could this place be anyone's favorite? Her behavior started to unnerve me. She opened the door and we entered a huge movie hall. Burnt seats littered the floor, and the large white screen that had played countless movies stood there like a dirty old rag. Can you imagine how many people have stayed here, she said. Yes, there are people who died here. After she sat down, I also chose a slightly better seat than the other seats. She lit a cigarette and we started smoking. I was already a little drunk, and after smoking, I was even more excited. I wanted to kiss her, but it would be too abrupt without her permission, so I waited for her to make the move. My vision started to blur the longer I waited. She looked completely unaffected and I wanted to kiss her, but I waited for her to make a move. As I waited, my vision began to blur. Are you having fun? This thing is pretty strong. Don't you think there's something wrong with it? Her face began to become distorted. I knew that I was already too high and everything was just my imagination. But suddenly she stood up and started looking around as if someone else had come in. What's wrong? Is anyone here? She began to panic, shaking. I had no idea what was going on, so I just sat there like a stone, watching her crazy behavior. She jumped out of her seat and sat on the floor, clasping her hands as if in prayer. Look, I brought you, now please, please give me strength, she said. What? What the hell is this? She didn't notice me, the invisible master who had been praying to her. I stood up and realized I had to get out of this place. This woman is crazy and not who I imagined she would be. I started to walk away but she grabbed my t-shirt from behind. Where do you want to go? They are all coming to find you. I have awakened them. Now they want their sacrifices. Their power will all belong to me. As she spoke, I heard horrific screams, coming from every corner of the cinema, like hundreds of people in great pain, begging for help. Their screams numbed my ears and she started laughing like a madman. The smell of burning flesh hung in the air, suffocating me. I just wanted to get out of there and never come back. But something unexpected happened. She suddenly stopped laughing, and I saw her face turn pale, as if she was afraid of something. Why don't you take him away? I have brought him, now please, please accept my sacrifice. Before she could finish her words, her body suddenly caught fire. She literally began to feel the invisible force ignite her, and she let out a scream of great pain, while the voices around her began to laugh evilly, seeming to take pleasure in her pain. She walked towards me, stretching her burning arms, the flesh melting away and falling to the floor. I fled that place in fear. I could still hear her screams and demonic laughter from outside, but I never dared to look back. That night, I nervously ran to the car and sped away at top speed. I would not go out again for a month. A week later, 
Police discovered the charred body of a girl, now listed as Jane Doe, because no one could identify her, in a movie theater. The case is still ongoing but please don't accuse me of being selfish or heartless, I won't go to the police and tell them what happened that night because they will never believe me. This story took place in April 2015 in a small cinema in London. The main characters include me, two of my friends, and a little brother who is only nine years old. It was a Wednesday night and we decided to watch a horror movie called It Normally, we would go to the movies late on the weekend in the hope of booking the theater, and Thursday that semester happened to be my day off. We just stepped into the door of the cinema and everything seemed normal. Soon, however, a disturbing plot begins to unfold. It was a man wearing a dark gray hoodie, sitting in the upper left corner of the cinema. His presence made us a little uneasy, but we didn't pay much attention to it at the time. We just regarded him as one of the other spectators and paid no attention to him. We chose seats in the upper rows of the cinema, deliberately leaving some empty seats between us in order to make ourselves feel more comfortable. My two friends sat next to me, and in order to give my little brother more space, we kept our seats empty. This may sound strange, but having a little brother present makes it slightly different. When the movie started, the lights in the cinema gradually dimmed, leaving only the light on the screen still flickering. Everything seemed normal and we were looking forward to a nice movie night. However, not long after, our tranquility was broken by the noisy snacking of our little brother. He ate the candy loudly and his voice was very harsh. About five minutes into the movie, I heard a strange noise coming from behind us. I turned my head to look, but didn't see anything strange. However, I hesitated for a moment to look more closely for the source of the sound. This time, I saw the man in a dark gray hoodie, who had moved closer to our seats. This small disturbance made us feel a little uneasy, but we didn't pay much attention to it. However, soon after, the strange man began to behave strangely again and continued to change seats. I told my friend as he approached us again. We decided to stay in our seats, but my anxiety grew. I began to feel as if this man's gaze was piercing my back, making it difficult for me to concentrate on the movie. I told myself that if he came close again, would confront him decisively and ask directly what his purpose was. But at the same time, I started to wonder if I was being too nervous. Perhaps, he is just an ordinary spectator who frequently changes seats to get a better perspective. However, the strange behavior of strangers did not stop. After some time, he approached us again. I turned around to check, ready this time to question him directly. I was surprised to find that he was only two rows away from us, sitting in the middle, directly behind us. I can't stand this uneasy feeling anymore. Although I tried hard to restrain myself, the fear inside me could not dissipate. During a relatively quiet moment in the movie, I turned to my friends and said to them, don't look back, but that person keeps getting closer to us. They looked confused and were unwilling to confirm. So I sat back down in my seat, but I could no longer concentrate on the movie. Although my eyes were still focused on the screen, I seemed to feel the man's gaze, as if his eyes were boring into the back of my head. I told myself that if he came close again, would confront him decisively and ask directly what his purpose was. At the same time, however, I began to wonder if I was being too nervous. Perhaps, he is just an ordinary spectator who frequently changes seats to get a better perspective. However, the strange behavior of strangers did not stop. After some time, 
he approached us again. I turned around to check, ready this time to question him directly. I was surprised to find that he was only two rows away from us, sitting in the middle, directly behind us. I can't stand this uneasy feeling anymore. Although I tried hard to restrain myself, the fear inside me could not dissipate. During a relatively quiet moment in the movie, I turned to my friends and said to them, don't look back, but that person keeps getting closer to us. They looked confused and were unwilling to confirm. So I sat back down in my seat, but I could no longer concentrate on the movie. Although my eyes were still focused on the screen, I seemed to feel the man's gaze, as if his eyes were boring into the back of my head. My worries became real in this moment, not just a feeling. I doubted my own judgment, but I couldn't hide my uneasiness. Finally, I couldn't stand it anymore and turned to the man, ready to demand an explanation for his behavior. I felt very nervous, but I was determined not to be scared again. When I turned around again, he was gone. His seat became empty, leaving no trace. I was stunned and couldn't believe what I was seeing. I told my friends and they too were confused and worried. We finally decided not to stay in this uncomfortable situation any longer. I stood up, told my friend to wait for me, and hurried out of the cinema hall into the empty cinema corridor. There I saw the man wearing a dark gray hoodie enter the men's restroom. I felt extremely worried and worried for my baby brother's safety. I decided to go into the men's room to keep him safe. When I opened the bathroom door, I found the man kneeling on the floor, trying to peek into the bathroom stall. The moment he saw me coming in, his eyes turned to me. At the same time, I heard my little brother calling my name from the distant corridor. He seemed confused. I hurriedly walked towards my little brother and took him away from this dangerous place.